Good morning, everyone. Okay, let's start with the prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship you here today, Father. I pray that only your name will be glorified through this worship. I do pray humbly to help us with the help of the Holy Spirit to understand the deeper meaning and the insight and the truth behind the scriptures we'll be looking at today so that we can become the people that you want us to be, godly people, holy people, and the profitable Christians, Father. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I have my slide? Hmm. Okay, that is the compass, very old compass. I, I was told that that is a compass carried by Pirates of Caribbean, which is in the theater now. It, our today's topic is somewhat related to the compass and map. About two months ago, on April 6, uh, 2017, that's Thursday, and uh, you, everyone, probably you heard the news, 59 Tomahawk uh, guided cruise missiles were launched from two Navy vessels. Um, the target was military air base in Syria. On the map, you can see where that is. So number one, to give you some idea where this is, number one is uh, Italy, and number two is uh, Israel, and number three is the target. That's the location of Syria, and uh, the circle that I put is approximate area where two Navy ships was located. Of course, exact location is classified. I have no idea. So that is uh, actually the East Mediterranean. Uh, the Navy ship name was, uh, one was a USS Ross, the other one was a USS Porter. And approximate distance from the target was anywhere between 200 miles to 600 miles. And they launched 59 cruise missiles. And if you heard on the news, 58 of them hit the target with pinpoint accuracy. One was defective. Mass manufacturing always produce uh, defective one. Okay, this is actual picture released by the military on that night. This is from USS Porter. And this also is another picture. They're launching it. So, what makes the cruise missile traveling such a long distance so accurate? So that's the question. This is actual the satellite picture of the before the hit. And here is the after hit. All those small tiny yellow circles indicate the damage done to the airfield. So what makes Tomahawk cruise missile so accurate is a GPS, the global positioning system which we are very familiar with now because many of us carry this in our car. This is the picture of the uh, destroyer launching cruise missile. From here, it looks like a small, tiny the missile, but actually it's pretty large. It's about 20 feet long, about uh, uh, 2,900 pounds, which is almost 1.5 ton. And GPS will make the missile fly up to 5,000 miles. In this case, it was less than 1,000, 5,000, but it can fly and hit the target. It's all because of GPS. And the same technology we have in our car. Uh, so we have an on-dashboard GPS, the one that looks like in the picture. Some of you might have one that is built into the uh, dashboard. And so you carry the iPhone with the app which actually is the most accurate, I was told, because iPhone app updates every day. 
But in dashboard, GPS can be as late as two years. Well, you'll get to the place, but it's not that updated. So what does GPS do for us? We use it, but what does that do for us? It takes us to home. That's the job of GPS. The GPS on the Tomahawk, its job was homing into the city target. And the GPS we have in our car is take us to home. Wherever we are, we push the button, like go home button, it goes to home. So if there is accident on the road, it's okay. It takes detour, but still, it takes us to home. I have this picture, I hope that you can see it. So this is the uh, GPS map. If you're coming back from Orlando, Florida, you put in the, your home address, Bluebell, Pennsylvania, and the letter is so small I cannot read now. Anyway, so you push the button and it's gonna take you all the way from Orlando, Florida to Bluebell, Pennsylvania. If you're coming back from the Dallas, Texas, same thing. It takes a little longer but it indicates which route to take, which, and if there is an accident on the road, it's gonna detour and still take you home. GPS, that's what it does, take you home. If you're coming back from the Los Angeles, it takes about 39 hours straight. Of course, that's if you don't go to the bathroom, if you don't drink, if you don't put the gas in the car. But of course, you have to do so. It's going to take longer than that, but GPS will tell you exactly how long it takes if you travel at the legal speed. So if you push the home button, it takes you to home. That's what GPS does. So just like last time, some of you are asking questions. So then it was nice new recaption and the good, thing, uh, good news about GPS, but what does GPS do? Uh, got to do with today's title. Uh, well, I'm glad you asked the question because today's title is I am the way and the truth and the life which is from John 14, 6. And it has a, a lot to do with today's topic. Give me a chance to explain. <laughs> I'll show you. So because today's scripture, John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life is GPS, there are two kinds of GPS that I'm going to show you. Uh, one is the GPS you have in your car. Let's call it physical GPS. It stands for Global Positioning System. There is another GPS, which is the topic we're going to talk about. Let's call it spiritual GPS. It's still called GPS, but it's called God Pointing System. And that's what we're going to be talking about. GPS that we have in our car takes us home. Well, GPS, spiritual GPS, also takes us home. That's our today's topic. GPS made by Garmin, TomTom, uh, Magellan, or well, your iPhone app, GPS, will take you to your physical home. If you live in Pennsylvania, it's going to take you to Pennsylvania. If you live in New Jersey, New Jersey. But GPS, created by God, John 14, 6, will take you to spiritual home in heaven. Well, Jesus is waiting for us, preparing a place for us. John 14, 3. So, on your outline one, Garmin, Tom Tom, will take you to physical homes, you can write physical home. On your outline two, John 14, six, will take you to spiritual home. That's where Jesus, our heavenly brother, is waiting for us. So let's look at the today's verse a little more carefully. Since I told you it is a GPS, God pointing system. By the way, there are more than one verse that actually point to the God, but this is one of the number one verse. I am the way and the truth and the life. Let's break this down in three parts. So, that's three parts. Let me flip this 90 degree, and then 
modify a little bit, and then I'll explain. I am the way means I, Jesus, is the only way. GPS, God pointing system. Jesus is the only way, point to God, that you can go home to in heaven where Father lives. No other path to heaven exists. No other name given to us that can take us home. Of course, Abraham is a great guy who lived many, many years ago. King David, Nehemiah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, they're great guys. I'm sure it's fun to spend time with them too, but they don't have the power to take us home. Only Jesus does. Only Jesus is the one who can point where God is, GPS. I'm the truth. I, Jesus, is the only truth. By the way, the truth is the, like a dress that we input into GPS system. So pay attention to that part. The truth is equal to address, which I'll explain soon. So, only truth that can take us back home where Father lives. There's no other truth that'll take us back to home. So you need a GPS system, which is the way, and you need an address that you had printed GPS. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, uh, truth soon, but keep in mind, okay, I am the life. What he was saying is, I, Jesus, is the only one who can give a true life. The here on earth and in heaven. The important part is, not just in heaven, but also here. Everything else is death. Jesus is the only source of all life, true life. You are breathing, you are walking around, you are eating, you are sleeping. But if you don't know Jesus, you are spiritually dead. Only when you get to know Jesus, you have the life that belongs to you, the true life. So, on outline three, you can write this. I am the way means Jesus is the only way to heaven. Outline four. I am the truth means Jesus is the only truth that will take us to home. By the way, this will be on our website within a week. If Sam worked quickly enough, you'll have all this PowerPoint later. So, question, I'm not giving you pressure. Question five, I am the life means Jesus is the only one who will give us the true life on earth and in eternity. So, I told you that uh, you need to put the address in the GPS, just like the way used to. So, in spiritual GPS, you don't put in. That's a very low tech. Uh, actually, the, in spiritual GPS, is far more advanced. I know some younger guys are shaking your head. What are you talking about? Well, let me explain. Uh, let me enlighten you today how advanced our Heavenly Father's technology is. Just give me five minutes. So we say the truth, like voice activated. You know, when you actually say the truth, we don't type it in. We don't email it, we say it. Uh, you say, well, we have a voice activated machine. Hold on, let me compare later how bad what we have is. So, what is the truth? Well, the John 3.16 is truth. Uh, for God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. Okay, says so John 3, 16. So that's the truth, which is equivalent to address you print to GPS. So you might say, okay, how do I put that in? Well, I'll show you how you put that in. Just take time. What does this mean? Well, let me just break down a little bit. The truth means God did all this so you can be, one, set free from the bondage of sin. 
If you don't understand this yet, well, hold on. Two, God did this so that we can be set free from the fear of death, too. And then, number three, God did this so that we can enter into eternal life, go home. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In order to be saved, in order to go home, all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord, which is Jesus. It means by calling on the name of the Lord, Jesus, the truth, you can go home. So if there was anyone who was wondering, I, I want to go home, but I don't know how, well, today's chance. Let me explain a little bit more. I'll make it easier for you. So John 10, 9 said, number one, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and number two, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, number three, you'll be saved. So it's only two steps, one result. All you have to do is believe and say with your mouth, that's very important, by the way. Say with your mouth. This is so important, so God recorded this twice in the two separate scriptures. Uh, verse 9 and verse 10. Basically, verse 10 is the same as verse 9, except he just tossed them around to confuse us. Not really. He just want to make sure that we understand. So let's read the 10.10, 10, which is the same as 10.9. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you are saved. Same thing, just say it differently. Did you notice God does not use a keyboard? So we are saying, I know this weekend is a long weekend then. Are you okay? Let me explain. God's GPS input system is so advanced. It is the most advanced voice recognition input system you can think of. Even 2,000 years ago, it was voice activated. Do you get what I mean? 2,000 years ago, in the Jerusalem, first group of Jewish people who accepted Jesus when they want to accept Jesus, they didn't have to type it in. They didn't have to send a letter. All they had to say was, I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I accept you as my savior. That's voice activation. There's no microphone, but God is so advanced. He can hear you whenever you say that. You can say it loudly. You can say quietly. When you are so down, you could even say nothing but just talk in your mind. And he listen. See, that's how advanced he is. And I'll do a little more comparison to make sure you guys understand. Everything we know use keyboard, including enterprise. I looked at this very carefully. You know, look at the very fancy control, all the same. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I looked at it very carefully. Did you notice the keyboard? Yeah, it so, looks so advanced, but they still use keyboard. God doesn't use keyboard. 2,000 years ago, even 4,000 years ago, he listened to the Abraham. He doesn't need a microphone. I'll do a little comparison about the Amazon Alexa a little later. So, Tama Miso, this is how primitive we are. Here is how they key in the target coordinate when they're launching this. This is their screen. So, USS Porter is one of the ships. So, you have to print the longitude and latitude. You have to print the degree, minute, second, and direction. And go to the latitude, same thing. The degree, minute, and second, direction. And then computer recognize is Saret airfield in Syria. That's how primitive we are. God doesn't use keyboard. And 
probably a soldier push the button, launch. We don't have to. We just say amen. Okay, how do you use your GPS? Well, this is how you do it. We have a Garmin GPS. If you want to come to church on Sunday, well, you got to print the street address, you know, 550 Township Line Road, and you put the blue bell. You even have to tell state, and then probably you push the go home button, and then it's going to come. But God's GPS, you say it with the mouse. So do you get it? How advanced he is? It is voice activated. Just because this ancient text, sometimes we look down. But he is the creator of everything, including the, all the technology that we know. Sometimes we forget that fact. Okay, uh, just to demonstrate, Apple's iPhone, Siri, one of the advanced voice activated system, half of the time it doesn't understand me anyway. And the Google Home, yeah, it's a little better than Siri, a little smarter, but there's a problem, I'll tell you soon. Amazon Alexa, same thing, yes, it's smart, smarter than I get 30 years ago. But all of this has problem. What happens if you use this device and you are about 100 feet away from the microphone? It cannot understand you. God understands whatever we call it. It's so advanced. We can be 100 feet away, 100 miles away, or even you can call in quietly from anywhere. It could be basement, or prison, or inside a concrete bunker. You call him, he understands. He listens to your voice because he's God and you are one of his own. My sheep listens to my voice. We listen to him. And he, uh, he, and he said, I know them. He hears us. That's why he can hear us from whatever we call him. That's John 10, 27. I hope you get that, how high tech he is. Because you guys are so high tech. I just want to spend the next uh, few minutes to show you this picture. This picture is actually the same size as one you see here. It might be a little bit bigger than this. It's about 12 feet wide, 4 feet high. It's done by the local artist who lives in Montgomery County. <laughs> Some of you might know who this is. Well, I'm showing this because it actually has the same title as today's title. The title of this painting is, I am the way and the truth and the life. It kind of summarizes very simply what we're talking about. Well, let me explain. So, look at the first circle that I circled. That represents people. Everyone is, in our life, owners, we're walking from right to the left, toward that red door. That's Jesus, by the way. And when we hear the gospel, we have to make a choice, whether to go through that door or just bypass it if we go through that door, we go to heaven, as simple as that. If we do not enter that door, then we go to the other side. This world has a lot of temptations. Did you notice other doors look more colorful, fancy, but other doors doesn't do anything. Only door is Jesus that's going to take us to heaven. It's painted red with his blood. And he paid for it. And that's what John 3.16 is talking about. So we have a choice. I know a lot of people who make a choice of not believing him. But then you go someplace else. If you choose him, you're going to go to heaven. You see the heaven on the upper left side. So this painting explains very easily. 
Let's be real. No one is living under the illusion that we're going to live 150 years on Earth. Well, people used to do that a long time ago, but not anymore. Some of us will live 90, 100. Few will live over 100. But we all know that we're going to die soon. So you have to make a choice. Then what is making you put it off to make that choice? If you want to go home where God lives, well, Jesus is preparing our place. This is how you say the truth into God's GPS system. Remember, voice activation. Jesus, just read this together with your mouth. That's all it takes. So some of you, if you want to, accept Jesus that you have not before, today you can do that. Just say with your mouth. Some of you who already has accepted Jesus, you can reaffirm just by following. Let's just read this together. Yes. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sin and invite you to come into my, my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you. And my Lord and Savior in your name. Amen. Okay. If you pray this for the first time, this is what happened to you now. Holy Spirit just came into your heart. You don't feel anything. You're not supposed to. Uh, you might feel something later, but not now. When you said amen, that is like pushing go home button on God's GPS. You just pushed it. So whenever you're ready to go home, he's going to take you. You don't have to worry about how to get there. He'll just take you there. Not yet. You have things to do here. God knows you will be coming home now. So Jesus will be adding one more place just for you. He's busy getting ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Today we talked about 